Hey -o, my planet zoo friends, Johnny5 alive here, and <laughs> I got bad news. Oh, this beta has been so heartbreaking. So, why are we at the main menu? Well, guys, my file is corrupted. My game will crash every time I load my zoo. And there's nothing I can do. Seen some people on Discord saying this too, and uh, they just said they had to restart. Spent 12 hours yesterday collecting enough conservation points for lions and I'm selling the lions for like 600 conservation points. I can sell one lion for the amount of time it like for what it took me like six six hours to get 600 conservation points selling like little menial animals. <sighs> I was just about to start racking in conservation points. We had uh, about 150 animals in our zoo. So lesson learned, don't make a savanna. So what, what can we try in today's video? Well, since the zoo is no longer working, well, here's our first one, our test. Let's find out what happens when we close it. <laughs> you will lose the cash. Zero animals be, be, be sold for zero credits. Well, that's the first one. Yes, close it. Hopefully our big grandioso one. <laughs> Look at that, 1.7 million. It looks like we have the conservation credits carried over, which is good. Now, if I close it, will I get conservation credits for my animal? 83 animals will be sold for 3,106 conservation credit. You will lose all the cash and all the research. That was probably the thing that's gonna drive me nuts the most because it took me hours of waiting for that research to get done and i was like yes i have all this stuff i can build things now got all these cool african themes but the safe is corrupt we have no other choice it's only selling 83 out of the 150 animals i had uh i don't know why that is but i will take that 3106 conservation credits that will put us up to 4800 or 4900 or something just over like above 5000 so let's uh let's claim those 4990 all right so not all is lost <laughs> <laughs> we have 4,990 conservation credits, which means our brand new zoo, we can start off with some lions and that should be great. So I'll get what I'm thinking I'm going to do here. I'm going to create a new zoo. I'm just going to get the bare bones going, get something going, maybe a lion's den and just run that and get all my research done and all that. So here we go. Maybe I'll do a speed build of it and we'll just go into the speed build now. Boom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are speed building. Now, just want to mention that this is not a zoo that we're building. Like, this is a basically a prototype moneymaker. The whole idea here is just to get the fundamentals going, make a profit, get our research done, and basically get back to where we were on our last save. <sighs> which is very very sad but you're gonna try to let it go try to not be salty about it it's the beta it's been happening to everybody i'm not the only one who's lost a park and honestly like i there's people who put a lot more effort and design and artistic polish into their zoos than i did i'm sad i lost the wolves den the savanna was okay i was really gearing up to redo the savanna entirely and i just uh I had all these plans for it, but looking back at things now, it's learning experience on where the beta's at, where the engine's at on the current build of the beta. The Savannah's not a very good idea. It doesn't turn out the good, it doesn't turn out good conservation credits. And because you're selling all these different animals, they're they're breeding like crazy. You spend so much time managing them and they don't bring in very much conservation credits at all. But it's it's not bad as a start, especially if you don't have any conservation credits at all. You need some way to earn them. But the Tigers is really where it's at and we're going to discover that later. We got about an eight minute speed build here of me just kind of building up this bare bones, you know, functioning functionality zoo. Um, and then we'll go into the live, the live, I guess, spotlight of it. And we can talk a little bit more about where we're at. And basically, the next episode, we'll be ripping all this down using the money that we've earned, the conservation credits that we've earned, and uh, all that stuff to build up something from scratch. See, the thing is, uh, the, the, the reason I'm not, like, researching as I go and I just want to research it all is because the research that specifically the mechanics they need to be monitored like you have to sit there on fast forward and watch the mechanics now i had a little bug here and this is actually a good learning experience 
but this didn't happen to me in the last park but so this is why i'm so confused but you're learning things as we go like this is our technically our third park now and i'm still constantly learning things and little quirks of what how things work but yeah i guess i put that fence too close to the path and now it won't let me do anything with the path so i, I know to kind of keep the staff stuff a little bit of ways away from from the path from the fences because then yeah things just won't connect properly so that that's a good thing to know because now when i actually go to design a proper staff area that's somewhat centralized near all the uh enclosures i'm gonna give it some some breathing room and you know do some stuff there so yeah i'm putting all the educational stuff around the bins you know like i'm not actually like doing that Pretty. I'm just spacing them out a good amount of ways to increase income. This is all about efficiency. Um, no, nothing here is supposed to be decorative, pretty. It's just a big, giant, circular money-making machine. That's that's the whole idea here. It's not pretty at all. And I, while I could make it somewhat pretty, I am going to literally rip it all down. <clears throat> And uh, I feel like with our last park, well, the last two parks, we were just trying to, well, the very first one, I was trying to build as much as I could with the money I was earning. And <laughs> we went bankrupt doing that. Uh, but I was I was learning the game. Second park, I was doing the same thing. I was basically building as I was going. And I do like that. But like I was jumping back to what I was saying earlier is the mechanics need to be monitored at all times. They have to be, you have to keep a close eye on them because they'll just pop out of research. So right now in the beta, you kind of have to just get the research done and out of the way. And I'm sure on release, you can just have it going and eventually things will complete. But you know, if there's something you want to build, you're going into like a little area and you're making like a lion's den and you want to use some Indian theming or something. Because let's be honest, this modern theming, the stuff that we got, it's it's pretty bland. And I would rather have like thatched roofs and, you know, things like that. So um, I would rather have that accessible to me and go, okay, I'm going to start an area. I have all my decorations. I have all the staff buildings. Let's see what we can come up with. And I'm, I'm actually excited to look at all the, the knickknacks. And this is where I was at at the end of yesterday's video. I was like, I'm going to rip it all down and go look at everything and that's when it crashed i should have deleted everything while i had an opportunity but you know it is what it is the only thing that really saddens me is the fact that we lost the wolves den because i did put six hours into that and i did try my best to make it really nice and i was happy with the way that turned out and honestly i feel like that's the only really nice thing that i've done in the game so far i mean the savannah was pretty okay but I, I looked at that after doing the wolves den and i'm like i can make this better i like the front entrance way to the savannah but uh i knew it could use more depth some more terrain it could use some kind of the, the ground could go down, the elevation could go up, there could be better overhead viewing, there could be rock work built into it. You could make it really intricate. But I'm constantly in my mind struggling, should I save this, save this type of energy, this type of detailing for the release of the game? And, you know, to my surprise, I probably, like, maybe... I mean, I, I don't regret doing the Wolves Den because I had a lot of fun doing it, and I know how to make it better for next time. So... There's a certain amount of detail and polish that you want to try for so you can learn how to improve on that. But then there's just a certain amount of basic stuff that you want to do so you can learn how to improve on that. This being one of them. We're building a warthog, uh, a, hip, a hippo uh, enclosure. So I bought the, the tigers and I spent the rest of the conservation credits on three hippos, I think. So uh, we got two females and a male. And now we're out of conservation credits, so I'm praying to God that the tigers and the hippos is enough to bring in some money. But I was so surprised because so far throughout this whole time of playing the game, my biggest mistake was always making the enclosures too big. So when I made that big circle, I was like, this is going to be more than enough for three, four attractions to bring in money. But the hippos end up like wrapping around this whole thing because I just keep having to make it bigger and bigger and bigger. Every time they give birth, they want like another 2,000 square meters. So I would say that the hippo area, and they can go up to like 10, 15, 20, I can't exactly remember the number, but they can get a big herd. And they're super expensive. They, they cost me a lot, like several hundred, five, six hundred, maybe more for each of those hippos. So yeah, they're, they're very expensive and they breed one at a time. So they only have one offspring very expensive little guys and uh 
are big guys <laughs> and they require a lot of space more than my savannah but what's great about that is you're getting animals that produce a high output so while you only have 20 of them it's much the 20 of them is more effective at making conservation credits and bringing in guests than all 130 animals in my old savannah which means it's it's better on the game it's it's a better performing throughput so by ha i'd r much rather have 20 hippos than 120 animals in my savannah that took me hours and hours and hours to manage and keep up with um it's just a way better trade-off and it keeps my game running nicely and i could still build a big sprawling savannah type area without taking the hit of running 130 scripts for 130 different animals so the hippos by doing this little practice area i learned right away okay when i rip this all down and package up the uh the hip hippopotamuses i'm gonna have to build a big sprawling area so we got to redo our savannah but it's just going to be for the hippos and we can you know really get into the detailing and try to make that elaborate so it looks like we're at the end of the speed build here as you can see i got things going the hippo enclosures wrapped all the way around and then from here i basically just went on to fast forward and bred animals sold animals and uh and and banked cash and got all my research done so let's hop into game and i'll show you guys where we're at all right so here we are in game <laughs> Like I said, it's not practical. No, yeah, is that the word I'm looking for? It's <laughs> it's a bait park. It's all there to make us money, and it, it's literally the worst looking thing I've ever done because it's meant for the functionality of breeding tigers. And look at the results. 7,000 conservation credits. We only have 200,000 this time around, unfortunately. Profits aren't nearly as good because I didn't build a proper park or zoo. Uh, but 200,000 should be more than enough to get things going and build to my heart's content. And whenever we end up building should hopefully profit. You know, it's it's nice having that million dollar buffer because if you go in debt from all the stuff you built and it's not profiting, you have many years to figure it out. But I think the 200,000 is more than enough buffer there. I hope, well, I guess we'll end up seeing. Now, I want to show you guys something here. I have a big bug and it's at the base. Uh, it's it, it's it's really unfortunate but you know you can sell animals on the trade market and you can sell them for a lot more than releasing them so you'll see here i got i have a trade center one two three four five looks like there's only five so some of them cleared up somehow i had more than five a lot more probably like 20 so i don't know how this fixed itself but hopefully it fixes itself for these ones but so it says there's five in the trade center and if we go to the trade center there's nothing in there now what's interesting about this is i can bring these animals back in and i was like did i just find a bug where i could sell them and then bring them back and then sell them again well no not really i can bring them back but i can't put them back in the trade center i can't sell them again but if i bring them back they're fertile i can't release them either if i bring them back and it unboxes them and i go to release them to the wild it's basically already thinks that I've released them to the wild and it says something is wrong with this animal You can't release it. It says this animal is no longer fertile, but you can normally release uh, Animals that have no fertility left, but the game will give you zero conservation credits But the thing they already considered it as a sold animal So those are actually just stuck in my zoo indefinitely But there's a bug in the game right now that when you move them from this pen or this enclosure to the trade center They're still considered to be in the adult population so if i moved like five of these to the trade center right now this adult population would still say nine so the problem was i have basically air animals that are non-functional that don't do anything that can't breed that just take up space that can't be sold or released they're basically just duds taking up my population so that's what this pen came in for i moved them all to here and then sent them back to the trade center and now that's now it's taking from this population from from whatever this includes closure is so that was my way of reducing population over here to there now <laughs> i'm gonna have to figure this out when we go to actually build the, the the actual new zoo some of these are duds and i don't know what to do here because we're we're now at a spot where we want to rip it all down and start new but selling things on the trade market will cause that error and you make a lot of money as you can see i have seven thousand conservation credits i was selling lions for like four or five hundred a pop <laughs> it's crazy some i mean some are less like 200 but you, 
either way, like the minimum amount you get for a lion is like 200, which is insane because once you have the lions going, they breed like insanely fast. Like look how many I have and look how much offspring I have. They just freaking breed and breed and breed and breed and breed. And the thing that's so nice about them is they have litters. So not just like one, they, they, they have like two or three and uh, there's so many females in here and they actually enjoy a, an adult population up to like 15 or 16. So imagine that two males, 14 females, all of them getting pregnant, all these little babies running around, they grow up, you sell off 10 of them for 500 each. That's like 5,000 conservation credits in the long run. And it doesn't take that long. So lions are literally the go-to thing. Now, if you're playing on a winter biome and when the actual franchise comes out, I don't know if I'll be doing the lions. Hopefully there's a cold weather animal that offers the same thing. Hippos are great too. I started with two females, one male. How many do we have now? Let's go back to our little zoo list here. We have to go through all the p-files. Well, p-files was the worst idea ever. I'm getting rid of, you can see I've sedated them all or give them all contraception <laughs> because uh, yeah, duh, they just breed and breed and breed and breed and they're worth $2 each, two conservation points. And it's not like the guests are donating a whole lot of money because of peafowls but uh yeah they're crazy <laughs> it gets out of hand and the more animals you have the the bog more it bogs down your game so my new idea with planet zoo and maybe even for release is to go big get big rare animals quality over quantity essentially anything that's you know requires a lot of little things like spring box or whatever that they need herds of 40 uh-uh not doing it no way it's just it'll kill my game now hopefully on release it's all sorted out we can have 700 animals in a park but i'm just assuming this is the way it is and we'll we'll investigate further when the game comes out so anyways started with three hippos and now look how many i have this is a great amount and uh they're all two star uh, or silver gold silver gold silver gold like i got lucky i only have one bronze they're all doing great they only have an offspring of one at a time but i believe if let's go to the animal trading center and we'll look for the hippo so if we sort by silver or better there's only two in there still sell pretty good i'm surprised oh the people have bumped down the price so low because they're kind of getting old and oh this one's actually really good a golden star male but the females obviously are they sell for so much more because they're the ones that you want like you generally only want like one male or two at most and then you just want the rest to be female because they're the ones that get pregnant so this person's selling basically an 18 year old female that has no fertility left it's getting to its yeah it's out of its prime it's not going to give birth anymore has a little bit maybe a litter left in it if it can get pregnant 500 so i'm assuming like a, a prime gold female hippo five years old or whatever we could probably sell that for a good thousand but again it's bugged out so if i were to release it to the wild uh i'm curious how much i would get i mean we could probably test it so here we go Ev everim 11 years old female 344 for releasing it that's pretty huge that's more than the lions which is a uh yeah you would imagine that because it they take a little they're a lot harder to breed um and she's not doing too well either the <laughs> the space here has become a problem so as they multiplied and now i have what eight or ten of them um that this whole area here look at this enclosure area it's huge it's massive they want 5,500 square meters of both water and land combine that that's 10,000 square meters together which is way larger than the savanna we made and they're not even close to their prime herd size they can double this and even triple it before they start complaining and they can go over that a little bit before you have to start worrying about selling them off so we're probably gonna have to have an area that's roughly oh, 15,000 square meters of land and 15,000 square meters of water if we want max herd size which is ultimate the ultimate goal but again the nice thing about that is we get basically an area that's going to be 
like this big and we can decorate it do a lot with the land make a uh, underground viewing areas inside of ponds like people are viewing down through the water and seeing the hippos we could do overhead viewing areas we could do cliffs we can have bridges we can have a, a safari vehicle going through we could just do so much with that area and it's all for what like 20 animals it's not going to bog down the game so it gives us a, a beautiful amount of building and time to play the game without worrying about fps drops or crashes so i'm super excited about the hippos as a choice and you don't know what you're getting yourself into until you try the animal out and and that's what i'm still learning in this game and it's still like a risk you know i think another one that i'm looking into is the crocodiles or the gharial they're critically endangered which means they're going to sell for a lot they can go into groups of up to 30 but they only have one offspring at a time but this this is very similar to the uh, hippo let's look at the hippo here up to 30 about the same age yeah it's, it's pretty much the same as the hippos. However, the alligators or the gharials are way more critically endangered by a lot. So these that means the value of these conservation wise is gonna be like triple. So I, I would imagine selling off one of these or releasing one of these to the wild could be like a thousand. So if we're going like water based with these guys, it might be cool to do another water based area with the crockies. And then we could do a big rocky area with all the lions. So that's basically the plan I would say. We gotta do lions. We have to. I just want to just see how far I can push the beta and earning conservation credits. And with these conservation credits, we can buy whatever we want. <laughs> so if I focus on the lions, make a really cool lion's den, big sprawling hippo area, I shouldn't be hurting on the FPS. And so now I'm at a point where, okay, let's use this money. Let's use these conservation credits and look at this. Well, the vet research isn't done, but that'll, the vets aren't as bugged out as the engineers. They will just kind of do it as they go and they won't stop. Like it's good. So I'm just going to continue to research this stuff as I play the game, but we got all of the mechanic research done. So I had all these researchers and I had all of these <laughs> workshops so we could pretty much get rid of these workshops now and they were just sitting there i was just on fast forward and uh you know they pop i reassign them reassign them and they pop out and i reassign them reassign them and i just waited it out did that got it done with and now with our staff all these guys named research goodbye 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 we don't need them anymore so that'll save us like five grand a month <laughs> so we should start making more money now these pea fowls oh boy <laughs> like i don't even want to bring them over to the new area so is there a way to mass select these no we're just gonna have to go one by one they i took away all their fertility so that i wouldn't have any issues of them continuing continuously multiplying and i was just waiting for them to grow up looks like we still have some babies unfortunately and yes i could sell these on the trade market but then the duplication bug will happen and they'll still be in my zoo so at this point i don't even care most of them are all gold all of them are gold i would say because i started with gold so we're just gonna <laughs> release all of them to the wild now hopefully yeah some of them have issues which is sad so 86 points for all of those guys it's nothing it's nothing uh look at them all boop <laughs> Hey, wait, there's not very many left, but now he's going to get super sad because they're underpopulated. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Can I rehome them? I'll figure that part out myself. But uh, <laughs> now looking at things, we just have our lions, our hippos, and I got to figure out how to get rid of these last pea fowls. We're going to keep the lions and the hippos boxed up on pause mode, and we're going to re-drop them into prime enclosures. So that's what we're doing now. We're going to rip all this down, box up all the animals and build a zoo with everything researched. <laughs> now I'm extremely overwhelmed and I hope the 200,000 is enough. I could just sit here on play mode a little bit longer, but you know what? We just gotta go for it. There's like six days left at the beta at the time of this recording. I've had nothing but bad luck. <laughs> Two parks gone on the third let's just go for it so the plan is hippos lions something decorative if i can make at least two nice enclosures that are interactive with viewing areas and overhead walkways and you know all that stuff i'm gonna be happy i hope that'll happen wish me luck everybody yeah if you're watching this now i've likely got something going let's put it that way because at this point i'm sitting here going oh my god <sighs> So uh, I'm probably not even going to release this video unless I have something done. So stay tuned for tomorrow and hopefully we have a, a proper looking park. But I'm just going to go ahead and get to work on deleting all this and uh, coming up with a vision and some ideas. 
I really had fun designing the wolves den, so I think I, I think I can come up with some cool ideas. I want to somehow, in my mind, the only thing that I have going on that I'm lingering on is I want to somehow combine the hippos and the tigers together. This is gonna sound crazy, but pretend like this is the tiger or the lions. I keep calling them tigers. This is the lion area and this is the hippo area. I somehow want the the, the lions to be above, the hippos to be below. They're not like combined, but they're kind of like sandwiched together, if that makes sense. And then maybe the guests can walk. Yeah, I have, that's that's my concept. I'm gonna go with that and see what happens. <laughs> and maybe it's not gonna work out. <laughs> you just never know in this game. You start doing something and you go, oh, I could have done that better. And it's, I think it's just, like I've said this before, it'll be like that a thousand times until I'm like, all right, now I think I make okay zoos. <laughs> This is definitely my worst one so far, but it's the most profitable one. Funny how it works, right? So now we're gonna go make our detailed nice one and it'll just go bankrupt and we'll be restarting again. <laughs> but at least we know, well, hopefully, um, we're not gonna have any crashes or low FPS. I know the last file got corrupted from the 140 animals in the savannah, so that's no longer an issue. That's 140 animals was replaced by like 10 hippos that are more profitable and that's way better. So with that said, once we build a hippo enclosure and a tiger area, and if we still have time left on the beta, then we can think about doing some crockies. I know you got, well, I gotta, we gotta bring back our tortoises. We got to, I just, I, we have to do that. Um, and we'll make it uh, a nice little turtle tortoise area. You guys were suggesting the, what are they called? The tapers. So maybe, maybe this park will have a lot of swimming stuff involved. Mm-hmm, like that idea. We, pl we played around with wintry stuff, bears and, and wolves. We played around with the savanna. But I do think we're going to be designing a very similar thing to the savanna with just more water. So I'll see what I can come up with there. But it's going to be big because the hippos are big and they like space. So I, I feel like every time I experiment with a new animal, you go, oh my god, like, I got to change all my ideas. So I want to play it safe. And uh, I know how the hippos work. I know how the, the lions function. So whatever we do after that, I'm going to have to do like a beta section of the park. <laughs> we'll go over, we'll make a square enclosure, and we'll see what happens. And we'll wait and we'll try to breed them up. And then we'll go, okay, let's rip it down and start something proper because if you just go into it and start building proper you go oh crap i'm gonna have to like redo all my art and it just becomes a disaster so i still feel like i have so much learning to do with all the different animals in the game because they all have yeah they're all a different project and there's so many ways to make them really cool and interactive so it's so it's really exciting it really is. It, the game has a lot of potential. So even after all the stuff that's happened, um, I'm feeling positive again. And uh, we'll see what we'll make the most of it. Make the most of our our restarting over. So there's my crappy money making thing. And hopefully uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. And we'll have something of a speed build. Woo! All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please do leave a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for more daily Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster videos. And if you'd like to support the show, please do check out my Patreon page. Links are down in the description below. And uh, once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye now.